here. I love my little intro music. It gives me a little bit of a boogie as I'm preparing to do the voiceovers. Anyway, hello everyone. Welcome back to my um, little channel. Today I am sharing with you some something that's popped me out of my comfort zone. I love the idea of art journaling and mixed media and you know, I always get so inspired by gorgeous mixed media artists like um, Lisa Oxley and all those girls. And I so wish that I could create like they do and, and make beautiful, beautiful art journals. But unfortunately, I'm still in the learning phase of that journey. <laughs> but something came over me the other day and... Out of the blue, I just grabbed my art journal, I grabbed a whole bunch of products that I wanted to play with, and I just went for it. And to tell you the truth, the results actually surprised me, and I've ended up really loving this piece in my art journal. So I thought I would share the video with you. I haven't posted a video for a few weeks, life's been pretty crazy. I've been a busy mum working hard and um, to be honest at the end of the day I had nothing left in my tank but tonight I thought I would sit here and um, do some video editing do the voiceover I've got a nice cup of tea here so I'm in my element the kids are asleep the house is quiet it's lovely so I thought I'd begin and I'll just talk you through um, you know my process and what I was thinking at the time I recently took advantage of the Scrap and Clearly 40% off store-wide sale and I picked up some of these Heidi Swap stationery collection uh, liners, they're called. I had, I had no idea what they were. They just looked pretty and um, I actually couldn't even work out what it was all about. And I honestly didn't even know how many pieces I would get in the kit but I was pleasantly surprised when I opened the box to find these cute little envelope liners and so I think the idea is that if you've got an everyday envelope you can just insert it in so when people open their letter they get to see this beautiful um, patterned paper in there that just makes the experience all the more lovely. So in, the, in each set, there's four. So it's actually really good value when I thought I was only getting one and I, was, I didn't even know what I was getting. So it was really good value. So I thought I would use a couple of them um, to help me build my background of this art journal piece. So I've just used some Mod Podge there and adhered those two envelope liners down. And I've, you, I've got this cut file that I have a fear I'm trying to think of whose cut file that was hmm so oh, I think it's Rona designs I think it's Rona Farah um, it was really intricate so I had to sort of a, like um, block it out a little bit in sections because I thought my um, silhouette would probably jump off the desk and punch me in the face because of the tiny intricate little pieces so I had to modify it a little bit in the Silhouette Studio um, software just to get it the way I liked it but you know how stunning is that it's and and then the other thing is I'm really having a bit of fun lately backing cut files but it's really time consuming and I'm I'm I struggle with time at the moment so I won I wanted to try backing the cut files with watercolour to see if I can get an effect that I was happy with. So that's what you can see me there doing now. I'm just playing with the watercolour. I'm trying to position where the flower is and the leaves are, um, where the cup fault will sit to get a better, um, you know, just to see if I can get that same effect from backing the cup files in cardstock. And I think, you know, I think it's working out really well, um, especially if you're wanting that little bit of a mixed media feel incorporated into your scrapbooking. So it's been lovely um, playing around there and just sort of letting loose. And if it didn't work out, 
it's, you're in, it's in your art journal, you just flip over the page and keep going with something else. So, you know, it's sort of risk-free um, creative time, um, these beautiful art journals. So then, as you can see, I just did some splatters around there and I'm just drying off as I go. And I really didn't know what I was doing. So as you can see, my process is a little bit mixed up. I, while I'm drying off, I'm thinking, oh, what else could I do? I really didn't have a plan for this um, piece. I just wanted to go with it and um, just have some fun. And if it worked out, it did. And if it didn't, it didn't. So with the stripes in the envelope liner there, I thought, why not I whack some block stripes there to sort of, you know, put a bit of a contrast but still blend the two sides together and see how it would turn out. I, I'm... I don't know any rules of design or anything like that. I just go with what feels good. And if it looks good in the end, we're on a win. <laughs> so that's where I was at. So then I'm here I was just checking, okay, well, what am I going to do with this cut file now? And yes, you've just seen it, the black gesso. I was like, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I was freaking out at this point. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? What am I putting black on this gorgeous page for? And that's, I've just spent all this time putting this beautiful colour on. But I really wanted that cut file to pop off the page. And I was really wanting to play with backing cut files in things other than paper. So out came the black gesso. I had this bright idea while I'm painting black stuff everywhere that I'm going to do a bit of journaling and, you know, um, maybe incorporate um, some of that black in somewhere else. To be honest, even watching me do it as I'm doing the voiceover for this is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> but I am glad that I was brave. See, here I am. You don't even know where I am right at the moment. I think I'm in the corner rocking and taking deep breaths. <laughs> but I thought, okay, maybe I was washing my brushes. I don't know. <laughs> but at the end of the day... Um, I just wanted to go for it and I was really in that kind of mood and I just wanted to see if I could not play it safe and something still turn out and you know I guess that's what this art journaling and mixed media is all about you know uh, I, I don't know I, I'd love to know what you think do you ever do anything crazy like well I don't know some people might not think this is crazy but do you ever do anything you think is crazy and what would that be and, you know, I actually want you, whatever your crazy thing is, just to go and do it. And you can tell me in the comments because I want to laugh too. So, so share your story, share your craziness, share your living on the wild side in mixed media land and I want to hear your story. So anyway, so here I am um, just putting some adhesive on. This is just the glossy accents, which is, I don't think it's designed to be an adhesive, but it's got that beautiful little fine tip on there and it sticks really well. So I've, for all my intricate sticking, I tend to use that glossy accents stuff. All this stuff that I'm using is available for purchase in the Scrap and Clearly online store. Um, Kylie has a humongous range of mixed media products. So if this is something that really interests you, definitely check out scrapandclearly.com.au and you will be in heaven. Um, so at, when I pop this cut file down, it's adhered down, I thought I really need to block out that centre because I really wanted to pop that cut file off the page or kind of make it an entity of its own. Um, and then I wanted to put a title on there. So I needed to sort of block it out so that if I pop the title on, it wasn't going to get lost in the in the background that I'd created. So I found this washi tape, um, which is really cute. It's got lots of little tiny triangles all over it. And that worked really well. So I incorporated that in the middle and I just wanted to make sure it wasn't alone. So I just put a couple little pieces, um, you know, elsewhere on the page. This is Whip Spackle also available in the Scrap and Clearly store. It is um, a lovely form of texture paste, but it's so fluffy and you just kind of want to eat it. You want to kind of whop it onto your cupcake. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think about food a lot. So you'll probably find lots of food related comments if you end up following me on my YouTube channel. But 
Whip Spackle definitely has the feel and texture of a really great frosting on top of a cupcake. And it's really easy to use and spread and it really gives you a nice coverage. You can also colour it. So I, in the past I've sprayed some Heidi Swap Colour Shine in there and given a bit of a mix up and it tints it and it looks lovely. So I highly recommend trying that as a form of texture paste um, and, and give it a go. So here I am playing with a couple of little cut file titles I've um, cut out with my Cameo and um, that adorable was just the right size and you know I thought the layout that I like the project that I was making was actually quite adorable and it was turning out better than I thought so I was just going with it. So here I go with the um, watercolors and I just wanted to make a bit of an om simple see if I could make a bit of an ombre effect um, with the with the cut file by just sort of painting the bottom half and trying to fade it up. Now it was really interesting. Um, it worked really well, but then in the end, I think it it all just dried the same color. Even though I applied more um, of the color to the the lowest point in that adorable sign, so um, it ended up not having an ombre effect. Still looked fabulous, um, but it was wasn't the quite the effect I've got. So then I popped it down. I really thought I need to sort of blend out a little bit more to give a bit of a contrast from the washi tape into the cut file. And that's where I just picked up a little bit more elements of the green and just um, blended that washi tape, that, that section from the washi tape onto the white cut file there. And sort of that set that kind of bordered the title to sort of make you draw draw to it again. So I'm just using some Mod Podge there. I Mod Podge is really good. It's a sealer and glue in one. So you can just apply it on and then you know use your finger to go over it and will and it will give a shine to the top of your um well, a title there. So this is where I think I'm going to use a white pen. It's going to look fabul fabulous on the black gesso. Tone that black gesso down for me. <laughs> and then my white pen didn't work. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? That's what I was thinking. What am I going to do with all this black area? And that's when I thought I'm going to have to end this video, go to Officeworks and buy a black pen, a white pen that works. So I actually painted a scrap piece of paper and I went down to Office Works and picked up two fabulous white pens. And you will see at the end when I photographed the project um, that I have um, done the white journaling and it looks great and I love my new white pens. And um, yeah, and it was good. The other pen got chucked. <laughs> um, so... I've just used some white Liquitex ink, which is fabulous. It really um, stands out and pops off the page. And that's what you want with your white ink to really help blend that black down. Um, and um, so I've just popped on that and I've just um, sprayed, did some flicks with some black Indian, um, in Indian ink there, which is really good. Um, I thought I'd just add a couple of little strips of titles to blend in some meaning with that adorable and those Tim Holtz tiny words did the trick and that's really the layout. So I hope you've loved it. I hope you've had a giggle over my process. I'm in no way an expert in art journaling but I really hope that my layouts inspired you to create in your art journal. So give it a like subscribe if you are inspired and I'll catch you guys again soon for the next one. Bye!